Welcome to this implementation example of the uh, how you would do uh, an onboarding process for your company. Uh, the upper right hand corner and select the process management tab. You would then click on the processes uh, tab and then you would click on the new process. You would then fill out the appropriate information. So this is the name of the process. So we're going to call this new hire onboarding process. We're going to give a short overview the list of actions that need to be taken for the new hire and approvals that are required. So in this case, the CEO must approve all new hires. And we're going to associate this with the corporate level. And then we're going to save this. So we can break down the new hire process into phases. So one phase might be the search phase, searching for new people. The status right now, we're going to call it in draft because we're just creating it. We can say right now that uh, we're going to mark this uh, red because we're not going to actually detail out the search process the process right now. This uh, phase in. Uh, now let's make a, a secondary phase. Once we've uh, done our search and we found a, a process, then we're going to have the, uh, the interview process. It's going to lead into an actual signing someone on board. So here we're going to be talking about uh, prospect interview. And we're going to mark this one as yellow because we're actually going to add some steps into here right now. Checklist for this one. We're going to create a checklist. And one of the things we want to do is first we're going to add them as a contact. Okay, so we need to know that information. This is an activity that needs to take place. And right now we're going to say that this is green. We're going to make it as a status. It's not started as the standard status of when it comes out. We just save on this. Clone. Okay, we're going to do, do interviews. Again, this is an activity that we're doing. Now this could actually be broken down into multiple steps. But we're just going to simplify it for a moment for just this one item. Clone it one more time. Finish that part of the process for now. Go back up to create another phase. New phase is onboarding. Now we'll create a checklist for the onboarding. Uh, first thing that they have to do is they have to fill out a W form and sign. We're going to clone this one. Make as one of the things HR needs, and this again is also to be stored in HR folder. So the next thing that we would like for them to do is to read a corporate uh, material, including charter, create account on Salesforce. So in this case, we're going to give each person a place that they can personally go in and play with the product. If they're not familiar with Salesforce, do Salesforce training, uh, depending upon their role. Listen to product demos. We can create uh, under the checklist item documents and give examples of the information that they need to pick up. So we can document them directly in the uh, tool itself. And this one is to consume this information and it's a high priority item that they do so. Again, okay, we want to clone this. Yep. So we finish this checklist item. So now back on that checklist item, we can now see the list of items that we need to consume, that they're online demos, and these are the URLs we need to click to see them. So we can see the online demos. So we might also want to have them in the list of online demos uh, to get a sense as to what's currently going on. We may also want to add, read the blogs. It's an activity we want them to do. And we will add a deliverable on here again, which is consumed. Continue a blog. So meeting priority, keep up with all the stuff that's going on. And now we can put in the URL. Enter that deliverable that we consume, which is to read the blogs. So in addition, we'd like for them to to uh, read material in read material under Documents tab in shared folder. Activity for this person to do. So we can make a link directly to that to save them time uh, by including this information. Okay, so now we have to find that deliverable. And one more thing we want to create a checklist for the onboarding process. One more item on here. 
get premium book and read by Robert Kaplan at the Harvard University Press. There's another activity I want them to do. And we, for example, could add a double one here, which is a book. Link to an external site in order to get this book. Each of these things helps save time and to make sure that the uh, person who's being onboarded has all the information for them to be successful. So by directly putting in a link to the resource, they don't have to guess as to exactly what they're supposed to get and how they're supposed to get it, thus speeding up the process of onboarding people. So now we've successfully created our onboarding process with all of its pieces. So if we go look at the process that we created for onboarding, we can now see all of the elements that we created. Now one thing is that we might want to put these in a specific order um, because certain things have to be done up front so that we can then say, for example, this item we want the order to be absolutely have to be done for the NDA, for example. We'll put that in at order of notice. It gives a number of digits after here, so you can do like a Dewey Decimal System sort of filing underneath this, and then we can do an order by. So now the checklist items show up in the order that we want to present them so that people go in the order that we want them to go through. So this is an example of how order can be used throughout the product. It's the same concept. We can also, and there we have it. And then, so we can define dependencies here between the items within this checklist. We can also establish a role related to a particular checklist. So you can have a checklist per role. This might be, for example, for the new hire themselves, what are the things they're supposed to do. But there was one item on here, like creating an account on Salesforce. That's obviously not the new hire's responsibility. Someone else is responsible. So that we could potentially put this item on a different checklist for the people. So the onboarding process can have multiple checklists and one checklist for each role that needs to be involved. So when a new hire comes on, the process originates, uh, it can notify the person who's supposed to create these accounts that they have something to do as well as get a list of the onboarder uh, something to expect. So we would potentially rephrase that one and um, log into your Salesforce account and make sure you can do that. So at any point we can add in other things. And there we have, we've now created our onboarding checklist and we've created it and we've reestablished it. We can put the ordering of the information, so this needs to go on much earlier in the process. So let's put this in at, uh, they're going to need that even before they get this. So we need to put this in here, so let's put that in at seven. And congratulations, you've now created an onboarding process now for your organization.